Hey guys, this is Epic Epics here. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on a hero anti-mage. This tutorial will be aimed for newer players, even though anti-mage is considered to be a carry. Now, why is because contrary to popular belief, I believe that anti-mage is a better hero to play for beginner players as opposed to a hero such as Lich. Because anti-mage, if played right, could control the tide of battle and if played right against beginner teams is extremely easy. So the items I have here to start out is a culling blade, two tangles, and three branches. Now why the culling blade? It's because culling blade gives anti-mage a very easy time to last hit and this is this is definitely suggested especially for newer players. Now for the first 10 minutes of the game what you want to do is basically last hit, last hit, last hit. Because anti-mage is very weak in the beginning, you would want a babysitter with you in the lane, in this case, disruptor. And you would not want to engage in fights until you have at least some of your items. So, as you see here, um, all I'm doing is trying to take creeps. And this is going to continue for maybe another 10, 15 minutes. So I'm going to put myself to two times speed. Now, while we watch Hello. myself last hit, you'll see, I'll explain briefly over what the build for anti-mage is, skill build-wise. For me, I believe the new popular build would be called the burning build. Uh, what it is, is basically one skill point in each, then adding points into stats until level 7, at which point you max blink. Then, depending on how much pressure you're going to, and whether you're going to be defensive or offensive, you decide to go into mana break or mana shield. Now, the specific build I went here is blink, then spell shield, then mana break, going extremely defensive. Because you would always want to get blink in case you get into a bad position at one of the lower levels. And then it's your choice to go mana break first or spell shield. If you are able to harass in your lane, go ahead, take mana break. This way you can start harassing the hero out of your lane and have an easier time to free farm. In this case, the bottom is clicking on me. Even though it's physical damage, I want to make sure that if my health gets low enough, I would not get taken out by a stray arrow or uh, shoot leaps in and decides to starfall on me. So the goal that you want to, uh, the, the CS goal that you want to maintain here is at 10 minutes with perfect farm, you should have around 60 creep kills. You want to stay above 30. Uh, ideally, you want to stay in the range of between four creeps to five creeps a minute. In this case, you see that bottom leaves the lane because there's little she could do considering that I had a support with me. And uh, so here we are, I'm getting free farm. And a few things for you to watch out for when you free farm is to keep the creep equilibrium. You want to keep one of the siege unit here so that the siege unit could balance out your DPS. And then you want to control denying and last hitting your creeps so you're not pushing your creep through. As you see, while I'm talking, it's been maybe a minute, but the creep wave is still here, right in front of my tower, where you are safe to CS as opposed to pushing here, going back, pushing here, going back, giving the hero, giving enemy heroes a chance to kill you. Now, well, ideally what you want is to have a ward on your side as you hear, see here, I have a ward at river where I could see where the enemy heroes are, if they are going to come and gank me. Uh, wards, about, wards are about $150 each. Ideally, you would want your support to get this item for you. However, if you're in a beginner level matchmaking, most likely you will not. Um, so what I suggest is that past 13 to 15 minute mark when you get your battle fury that you would want to buy some wars for yourself pluck them into the jungle and uh, to make sure that you have an easy and safe time and avoid ganks. So as you see here, I picked up early treads as opposed to going to a naked battle fury. This is because I see that our team is behind between 5 to 2. I don't want to make sure that if 
team fights are forced, I will be able to take the fight as opposed to having to dodge fights and run away. So the item progression past Quelling Blade, Tango and the Three Branches, usually you would want to pick up a poor man shield if you are getting harassed too much and you would want to go straight for a uh, ring of health if there's free farm or no harass. Poor man shield is the shield where you gain a hundred percent damage block from enemy heroes and six agilities. It is a stout shield with two slippers of agility so it's a relatively cheap item. And uh, as I was talking here, you saw that my hero picked up a lucky kill somewhere in the jungle when heroes came to gank me. Now, it's not important for you to pick up kills. It's more important to you to maintain that CS. As I was talking, it's 10 minutes and here we have 64 CS and 17 denies. That is a good momentum that you're keeping up. You want to make sure you're hitting somewhere around this benchmark for you to be effective later on into the game. Now, after finishing uh, the treads, uh, your ideally your next item would be the Battle Fury. The Battle Fury is the item here, as you see here. Let me find that for you guys. As you see here, it is uh, it gives you the passive ability of cleaving units. So meaning that if you attack one unit, your damage would be spread out to other units as well. And I'll explain why this is very important for you to speed up your farm as the game progresses. So here, let me go back to player perspective for you guys. So it is at 12 minutes, and uh, as you see, my Battle Fury is almost complete. Uh, normally, you would want to get the Battle Fury somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes, uh, although it is still effective if you get it before the 30 minute mark, and later you will see why, because it significantly increases your farming speed. Now, as you see, because I, max, I have one skill level in uh, Spell Shield, the Priestess of the Moon arrow, although it's at level 2, it barely scratched my hero. And uh, as you see here, I'm adding my Burning Build. Right now, I have points in multiple points in uh, the Attribute points. I have my Blink maxed, as opposed to Mana Break or Spell Shield. And then now, depending on the pressure that I'll be facing, I'll add different skills. Now, this is what I talked about, about not joining team fights. Although I had my Battle Fury finished during the team fight, I did not do enough damage and I definitely was not tank enough to be an effective team fight hero in this early stage of the game. And because I'm dead, I am missing out on CS and gold, and that is not what you want to do as anti-mage. With the battle period finished, now you will go in the phase where it's called the jungling phase. Here I'll give you slow down the game and give you guys a quick look at how it works. So I see an engagement pop, I switch my treads to strength so that I will be a little tankier in case I would want to engage. I take a look. Three, four of our heroes are dead. I am the only one left. There are three heroes pop. It's not a good engagement, so I go back to jungling. So, what jungling phase is pretty much is that you are killing neutral heroes and you want to skip between lane heroes and neutral heroes with your ability blink, where you can quickly go from one point to another point and effectively farm out creeps out farm your creeps to the enemy carry such as in this case Razor and Furion and possibly Marana when late game comes. So there are a few paths in the jungle that I will go over with you guys to explain how you can effectively go from point A to point B with the anti-mage blink. So in this case again I'm free farming I'm jumping around. I jump into the jungle because I see all the heroes are missing on the map and I feel like I'm getting ganked. Here, looking at the mini map, I was correct. There's a hero that teleported, there's a hero coming, and another hero in the enemy jungle. Now, I'm going to go to free camera and explain to you guys the pathing that Anti Mage takes while he farms. 
in the dire jungle, you would want to farm on this creep camp right here. And you would want to start with this because it's the closest with your um, spawning point. After you go from this creep camp, you want to go take out this tree with your culling blade and eat this creep camp. At this point, you want to blink from this point to this point and eat this creep camp. At this creep camp, instead of running here and blinking, I prefer to walk up to this point exactly. And if you're at this point exactly, you could blink to here. With this, you take this creep camp, and again, you blink here and take this creep camp. This could be all done within the minute mark. Afterwards, you want to go in and take the lane creep at this point. Now, if the lane creeps are pushed past the river here, it is a bit dangerous for you to engage because heroes could loop around you, come in from here, come in from here, and trap you and essentially kill you. Now, here you see the entire jungle is cleared. At this point, you want to jump in, take the lane creeps. It is 51 seconds. Creeps spawn at every minute mark. So that means 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So here, you continue to farm. You take the lane creeps. Afterwards, the jungle creeps are spawned. So you can effectively be go back into the jungle and continue your farming. If you are here in the lane, you want to culling blade one of these trees as opposed to walking around. This will speed up your farm. You culling blade this creep and you can start creeping. And then afterwards, you want to run here and blink into this creep camp. We'll switch back into the player perspective. I'll two times the speed. And I'll go over a few other benchmarks that you want to be hitting. So past past the 10 minute mark at where your CSing should be around 65 at perfect. If having a little bit of pressure, your CS would be around um, your CS would be around 40 to 50. Later, once you get your battle fury, you want to pump up your CS score with the jungling to the point of 10 CS a minute. Now. Why I didn't blink from here to here was because I felt that there was a hero in our jungle because everyone's missing and I felt like it would have been a bad idea had I blinked and I was met up with opposition and my blink got cool down, I could have been taken out. And here we'll take a look again at my skill build because I am getting a lot of pressure. So I decided that instead of going mana break first, I would go defensive in case I get ganked with spell shield. Now. I am making a conscious choice here, I am going to pause the game briefly and explain to you guys, I am making a conscious choice here to not join a team fight and instead pressure onto the T2 and hopefully force one of the enemy heroes to TP here to defend because I know that if I go in while that Ravage is up, I would have essentially been killed along with one of my teammates. And now that Ravage has been used and um, I decide that it is time for me to go back and here we can see why we don't pick fights in the early play uh, early times during the early phases of the game as anti-mage because you are simply not effective. Here we'll see that without the Ravage, how anti-mage could get some pickups and eventually and essentially help the team come back. So since the Ravage has been blown, I go back, I pick up my items. And I decide to go in for the fight. Now our team is significantly behind. It's 19 to 9. But here we'll see how anti mage is still somewhat effective, even though it's only 20 minutes. And all the items I have is a Yasha and Battle Fury. I pick off the Razor right away, and here I am chasing down the Potom. Here we see Culling Blade out of the Fury and Sprout following the Spurian, and we get three kills. With a triple kill, that pumps up our farm again, and we go back straight into the farming phase. Ideally, you want to continue this phase until 25 to 30 minutes when you have your Battle Fury, Manta, and best case scenario would be along with the Heart of Tarask. Here you see some, oh, sorry guys, I forgot to mention what you do if you are on the Radiant side. So I'm going to skip out of the player perspective, go into the free camera, and show you a little bit of what you should be doing. 
within the radiant side you have access to this creep camp right here the ancient creep camp to pump up your farm as you see before i get my manta i am actually very soft still despite having a max spell shield max blink and uh, strength treads so you would want to go into your safe jungle and continue to pump up your CS as opposed to going to the enemy jungle and farming offensively. Now going back to what I said, with the radiant side you could farm with this camp, blink up to this camp, blink up to here, take this camp, take this camp, culling blade this tree, CS this camp while standing at this section, walk to this cliff and blink to this section, blink up. You could, um, by the way, if for players that don't know, you could blink from this place to this place and straight effect would be going straight from farming this side of the jungle straight to this ancient camp, then blinking uphill and taking lane creep. So now that I'm almost revived, I will go back to player perspective and two times speed and we'll continue to see how the game progresses now i'm at 194 and it is 23 minutes so i'm a little bit behind the 10 cs minute mark but uh, we will see later how anti mage can, can still maintain effective so at this point with the manta and the battle fury complete i'm a less vulnerable to things such as silence to things such as silence uh, orchids for the Furion once he completes that item and that I will be able to be more effective essentially during a team fight because my Manta images will also do the full feedback damage therefore completely pumping up my damage to a point where I was not able to do prior to getting the item Manta style. Now the next item always always would be the Heart of Tarask. Heart of Tarask here, as you guys see, is this item that gives you a significant amount of strength and health and health regeneration out of combat. Why this item is because this item will help anti-mage to essentially tank a lot of damage and be way more aggressive than he could be otherwise without the Heart of Tarask. It is at the 25 minute mark, as I mentioned before, ideally you want to get the Heart of Tarask before the 30 minute mark. Now, as I said, I don't want to go past the river point because heroes could loop around and essentially give me a lot of trouble. So that's why I backed off, continued here into the jungle. And here is something you want to watch out for, something that I did not do. You always want to look at the enemy's item progression. Here, in this case, the Pudge caught me off guard with a Scythe of Ice. And as you see, this is very crucial. This could possibly be my third death. and. Later you will see it will be my third death. And here at 2600, I'm very close to my Reaver. If I pumped up my CS gold into two, 3k range, then I could get my uh, Reaver, get very close to the Heart of Tarask, and it'll be a lot harder for the enemy to kill me. Here you will see the entire team went on to me. The Ravage is blown. And I died. Now, why did I buy back? Right? They're laughing at me because they're thinking this is a rage buyback. But here, let me explain. Although you're killing around 10 CS a minute, you're getting around maybe 500 CS. That means you definitely lose out. So why buy back? Well, I bought back and got a vitality booster that boosts my health into the 1,600 1, range because I want to be constantly threatening the enemy. If during I was dead, they pushed in, my team be, being 23 to 14 would have been significantly behind and possibly we would have gotten racks. Instead, I bought back and I come here and I farm aggressively. I'm forcing the enemy to respond. I'm forcing the enemy to look for me. As you see, purple is looking in the jungle, seeing where I am. There's a Roche attempt. Instead of pushing because they know that I'm back, they would not be able to effectively push. Here I made a mistake, I tried to kill the Fury and I tried to blink into his sprout but I couldn't and I messed up. But uh, but instead I chased him away and I'm taking the tier 1 power. Now this is the response you always want to take. I blink into the jungle here because I don't know where the enemy heroes are. I did not know they were trying to take a Roche. Uh, I thought they were trying to gank me but uh, I blink back, played it safe and uh, 
and we continue back into the farming phase for a few more minutes. So as you see, it's 28 minutes. Uh, I mentioned I should have somewhere close to the heart of Tarask at uh, 30 minutes, uh, but uh, I'm somewhat behind because of those three deaths and the buyback that I had to do from earlier. Now, it's the same thing. We're taking lane creeps and we're taking jungle creeps. Uh, one thing to mention is that lane creeps should always take priority because they always give more gold. They give 40 gold each and you get four of them very quickly. And uh, here we see through the war that they are taking Roshan, or they are attempting to take Roshan. Now, first, I, um, but first you want to, hold on, let me slow down this fight for you guys. Um, while they're attempting to take the team fight, you would always want to pressure the lane at least so that even if you TP back that your lane creeps would be pushing on its own and it would deal some damage to the tower hopefully while you're fighting you never want to fight when the push when the t uh, when the lane creeps are pushed against you because if if you lose this team fight then not only do you lose this lane but the enemy will have access to the top lane the enemy will have access to the mid lane and they could essentially take out two lanes and essentially giving you a distinct a huge advantage disadvantage after you come back into the game after you guys uh, go for the next team fight now it's 29 minutes again i'm pretty close to the reaver so ideally i would not want to engage but the enemy is forcing a fight here and we'll see how effective anti-mage is at the 30 minute mark with uh item uh, such as this and it will give you a good idea a benchmark for when you guys play anti-mage Now I go back I grab a TP and uh, Here the fight continues. This is a perfect time for me to go in, but uh, I missed the opportunity I go in a little bit late take out the razor the ravage is popped pop the manta And we're chasing down different heroes, but I realized that my health is a lot lower than where it should be where I feel comfortable at so I go back and I go ahead and heal up after picking off all the enemy carries at 600 health you would could essentially die by getting hooked once or getting stunned with the bottom arrow and with Manta down if uh, if the Furion here well he does not have the silent stick yet because he has to go home and pick it up but if he had completed it he could have silenced me and I would have been in a lot of trouble so here, as you see, I sell my Culling Blade, I get my Reaver, suddenly your health is at 2200. With 2200 health, with your magic resistance here uh, at 62%, and your physical damage reduction at 40%, you are a lot tankier than where you would be prior to getting the item Reaver, where you are at 1600. So now, you can be a lot more aggressive. I'm going in the enemy jungle, where I'm taking away their farm, where I am staying in an aggressive position where I can threat constantly threaten this tier 2 tower here and um, with this anti-mage starts being more effective at the 30 minute mark so going over some of the things I said you want to maintain a 10 CS per minute you want to take this jungling pattern you want to take Battle Fury, Manta, then going into a heart, and most importantly, you want to not engage in team fight unless you're confident. You want to essentially delay the enemy by split pushing. You want to. Okay, here I see a Fury and TP. I hear the sound. I decide to blink into the jungle and TP out. So we go back into the jungling. I believe I finished the Heart of Tarask. And uh, we basically, you, would, you guys then will see why anti-mage is one of the preferred carries, why after farming, even though dying three times after farming for 30 minutes, anti-mage can essentially effectively finish a game. So here you see, Heart of Tarask finished, there's a huge team fight bottom, and uh, the fight starts, and you will see how effective anti-mage is with the Heart of Tarask. Last team fight, I went in, I Manta picked off a hero, and I was forced out. Two of our heroes are dead, but with the Heart of Taras, you could blink in. You're not afraid with 2600 health. Uh, you're going in, pick off the hero right away. Health is still full. Uh, Razor drains some of my mana, 
I'm dancing behind seeing what I should do. I see a Furion here for pickoff. I chase down the Furion while my team is chasing down the other heroes. Killing the Furion, blinking up the hill, and uh, looking for a chance to continue the chase. With, uh, with blink, it's very easy for the anti-mage to take the uh, fight to the enemy hero when you guys are ahead in a chasing position. So here you see with Bounty Hunter's track, Razor, he does not really have a lot of options here. Uh, he decides to dance back to maybe try to juke us or throw us off, but uh, as you see with the track, there's no way that this could happen for him. Uh, Razor gets cut up by the axe and here you guys see us pushing the creeps and uh, with anti-mage with the heart of Herak this uh, entire time you see team fight that my health was close to full and here getting harassed getting taking the you know taking the nuke from the touch taking the nuke from the bottom the pie hunter you see my health is not dropping below 1500 below 1600 and I could blink in I could be way more aggressive than I was before and I'm not even worried, because with 1500 health, I could easily blink out, even with the silence, even with anything that these heroes could throw. I see that Tidehunter was low on mana, I throw, I throw um, a void on Tidehunter, I pick up another kill there, and I decide, yeah, it's enough. It's enough. I'm going to back off, because there's no way I'm going to kill this Pudge here. I go in for a few hits, but I don't think, I don't think it's possible. Or actually no, with the with the track with the team, I uh, actually I think yeah I actually managed to pick up a few more kills. Anyways, yeah, forget what I said about not being able to kill. I pick up a few more kills. I'm way more aggressive with the heart of Thrask. As you guys see, um, you know, going down to 200 health, but with the heart of Tarask, I can dance around. I'm regening 65 per minute or 65 per second. That's essentially something like that. That is 600 per minute. So you know you could uh, you could be a lot more aggressive. Uh, it was a prolonged fight. It started at top. We chased the bottom, danced around, kill after kill after kill, but was still effective. Uh, Heart of Harass regioning every time I'm out of combat, and uh, as you saw there. Anti-Mage starts being extremely effective at the 30 minute mark once he gets these three key items. Now the item progression afterwards, uh, there's a lot of different options you could go with. Um, so here I decide to go with the Butterfly because I believe boosting my raw DPS as opposed to chasing power is more important. Because here we have uh, Track, we have Axe, Battle Hunger for slow. And uh, we have a disruptor for keeping the heroes together in a ring. If chasing was a problem for the anti mage, then you would want to go with the item Abyssal Blade. Abyssal Blade is the Skull Basher along with the Sacred Relic. You would want to do this because you have a 25% chance of pocking a stun for 1.4 seconds. And with the 1.4 seconds, that is a huge window of opportunity for you to boost your DPS. You are attacking here, as it says, 0.48 per second per attack so with a 1.4 second stun you're attacking about three times within three times your next attack if you are on par with your luck 25 percent every four attack you should get a stun you could essentially lock down a hero while you're fighting now here is what's important when playing the anti-mage you want to make the correct responses now all the heroes are gone you know they could possibly be pushing but with you being this far out it's most likely that they are going for a roshan attempt because otherwise you would see one or two hero pushing you back or you'll see one or two hero in the lane with our wards up here and here we know that they are not looking for us in the jungle with this ward here we see this trend we see these heroes here going for the roshan now instead of tp'ing back and attempting to counter their roshan it is a better idea for you to be more aggressive put some damage onto the lane as opposed to going back right away now why is this the case well because what 
could happen here is the most ideal thing is that you put a lot of damage onto this tower right here and the most ideal thing is that the enemy team do not see you come and instead you take a Rax in exchange for an Aegeus. That is the most ideal. The second most ideal would be you were forcing the enemy team to TP back one or two people to TP back and then it becomes a three-man rush attempt and with all your team there you are forcing a three to five team fight with a three to five man team fight hold on one second my computer is lagging uh, I don't know what's happening uh, please give my computer a second let me pause this for a moment Hey guys, uh, sorry about that. I'm back. Uh, my computer was uh, getting lagged a little bit by the recording program that I'm using. So here we'll continue to see. Um, with the heart up, you could easily tank the tower hits. And uh, here is what I'm talking about. You forced back two TPs. So now you see that it's a three man, or actually three people TP. So you see that it is a two man Roshan attempt. And uh, either they stay and they try to finish Roshan, or, well, I unfortunately get stuck in the trees here. But um, you see that either they force the fight at Roshan, continue the fight, or they're gonna all back off and you successfully defended the Roshan without having to back off without having the TP back and you put damage onto the tier 2 towers. Here you see they don't back off you know, fast enough and we get some pickoffs on the Pudge and uh, possibly, and yes definitely the Tidehunter here. So it's two more pickoffs for the anti-mage and it's at 38 minutes. I have my butterfly completed and here you will see uh, us finishing the game. So, as you guys saw, play passively for the first 30 minutes, then once you hit the 30 minute mark, you have the Heart of Taras, the Manta, the Battle Fury, you can start being aggressive. And after you be aggressive and you pick off a few kills, you fast fin you, um, you finish your Butterfly as fast as possible, or you finish your Abyssal Blade, and then you push to finish the game. Uh, I'll speed up the last uh, few minutes uh, as you see later in the team fights. Sorry, my computer is actually lagging again. Please uh, give me. So I am back. Um, hopefully, my computer will stop lagging this time. So um, I'll explain a little bit why you need to finish the game really fast because I've actually lost a few games uh, to when the game went really late. First, if the game goes really late, anything could happen because one mistake could translate to mega creeps. One mistake, the enemy heroes are so strong that they could push down all three of your lanes. Whereas supposed to, if you make a mistake now, they may take a Roshan or they may take one set of racks or maybe they won't even take a set of racks but once um you know one tier three tower because they simply don't have enough dps if you take a look all the hero here around 100 damage um oh, i'm sorry i mean 200 damage um so so here, I actually want to take back something I said. I just thought about it. Heart of Tarax doesn't regen 600 health. It, it regen 600 health in 10 seconds. It, um, it regens you more than 2,000 health in tw 30 seconds. So essentially, you go from no health to full health in 30 seconds. That means you're way more aggressive. And here, even though we are down by kills, down a lot by kills before the beginning of the fight, uh, you see we take this fight very very convincing uh, these heroes they don't do enough damage and with the anti-mage chasing away the supports uh, and the razor not being able to take our support you take one of them they call gg well played because um, it's essentially over so yeah you don't want to go late because anti-mage is a hero not that doesn't scale well into the late game. He is a melee carry, he gets kited the later the game gets. If all these supports got a ghost uh, scepter, if they all got a four staff, the anti mage is gonna have a lot harder of a time to chase them down. And why anti mage is considered one of the preferred fairy carries is because his split pushing ability, his ability to be aggressive, and his ability to farm very stable because of his survival ability, because of his split push ability.
If you pull that scale well into the late game, can actually kill and damage one on one heroes such as Morphling heroes with a lot of burst damage, like Tiny Seven. Um, you know, anti mage cannot take heroes. For example, a Seven, after getting a data list, can crit something like 1.9k, and there's no way an anti mage could take the fight. So, I'm gonna pause my replay here because. Um, Visually, the, my computer is lagging, and uh, I will finish up the video by concluding what I said. Finish the game at 40 something mark, and as you see here in the replay, the game continues for three more minutes. Three more minutes. So finish the game at 40 to between 40 to 50. Farm between 1 to 30, and go aggressive from 30 to 40 when you have the Heart of Tarask, Battle Fury, and Manta completed. Uh, I hope this has helped out some of the beginner players to get a better idea of what anti mage's role is um, how you're supposed to play him how to split push effectively and when to join the team fights to pick out supports and pick up uh, straight kills and maybe this could help out some experienced players with respective to benchmarks of um, how to uh, engage gauge your farm of uh, ideas of how anti-mage should split push. Anyways, this is SPF signing off. Thank you guys.